Psalms 109. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Now this psalm is a complaint and appeal to God over enemies. If we're going to see Judas in this chapter. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the, and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. So David wants revenge upon his enemies. They've spoken against him. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. And that happened to Jesus. And Jesus didn't, you know... Bring down fire. He didn't call upon them in wickedness. And vengeance is something that it's God, according to Romans. And I believe Hebrews. People are going to badmouth you. They're going to talk against you. If you're a godly person, the Bible says, you know, you, you live right. You're going to suffer. They compass me about also with words of hatred. Because you love the Lord. Because David loved the, the Lord. David wanted to do right. How is your Christian walk? And fought against me without a cause. That's Jesus. Pilate and Herod declared Jesus innocent four to five times. And what did he get? He got the cross. And there's going to be times in your life that people are going to use the tongue against you. They're going to be against you and you just keep on going and doing right. Paul had every Jew against him. For my love, they are my adversaries. And that's Christ. Name me one time that the Pharisees and Sadducees got happy that Jesus performed one of the miracles. But you read, they get angry because it was the Sabbath. They got angry because they never rejoiced in the blind seeing, in the lame using their hand or whatever the, the, the condition was. They got angry for the love of God. God looked upon the person and said, you have a need. Roman Catholics hate the salvation of the God of the Bible because they do good for their salvation and yet they can't prove that they're saved. And yet we come up and throw scripture at them and we do what the Bible says to do and they hate us. But I give myself unto prayer. Luke 23, 34. That's the proper reaction, prayer. And I don't mean you get down on your knees or you ask, oh, God, kill them. No. They don't know what they're doing. They're blinded by Satan. Pray, pray nice prayers for them. Pray that God will open their heart and give them light. They have rewarded me evil for good. And this could be true with David and King Saul. This could be true with Jesus Christ. This could be true with you. I didn't get the promotion because I'm a Christian and I try to do right at the job. And according to Job 1 and 2, God allowed it. What, are you saying God can't take care of you? And hatred for my love. You know, when you tell someone you love about Jesus Christ and they hated you, there's a verse. There's it black and white. The Bible already told you what, what would be the, the outcome. The Bible says, and it's, it's a truth you can't put off. Many will go the, to go the way of hell. Few will go away to the gate of heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what's sad? The fact is, if you are hated by your family or your friends, your co-workers, that's a Bible truth that they back up. I could put names next to that verse to prove the Bible's right. Set thou a wicked man over him. <laughs> that's not the prayer. 
We are to love our neighbors and do good that despitefully use us. And let Satan stand at his right hand. That's a that's a bold statement. But as now we get into Judas, Satan's already there. Satan entered Judas. When he shall when he shall be judged, let Satan stand at his right hand when he shall be judged. And look at all the lets in this verse. L E T. Satan's right hand man. Satan needed a job to be done, and guess who he found? Let him be condemned, and Judas will be. And Judas knew he would be. And Judas proclaimed the fifth or sixth that I have betrayed the innocent blood. Not just blood, the innocent blood. Judas, Pilate, and Herod proclaimed that Jesus was innocent. What does John 3 say? It says you're condemned already. Because you have not believed on the name and of the Son of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son. And let his prayer become sin. Interesting statement. Are we told something about Jews that he prayed? Let his days be few. We don't know what age he died. Young. And let another take his office, Matthias. Acts chapter 3, 4, is it? 2, 3, or 4. No, Acts, Acts chapter 1, I believe it was. Let me just look. Yeah, Acts 1, 20. Even Schofield puts that reference there. Acts 1, 20. Well, that reference of Acts 1, 20, let someone take his office... Guess who we're talking about? Whose office was that? That was Judas, Peter said. Let his children be fatherless. Uh-oh. You mean Judas had children? And let his wife be and his wife a widow. How about that? Let his children be continually vagabond and beg. Homeless. You got a quarter, mister? You got a shiku, mister? Let him seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Trash can. Dumpster. Go pick up the bread that the birds didn't eat. It kind of implies the fact is that you say, why in the Old Testament when Israel is the wilderness, why did the whole family get killed with Achan? Why was the whole family taken with when the earth swallowed up with Dathan? Because it takes for granted that the family knew what was going on. Let the extortioner catch all that he has, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity, posterity, that's his descendants, his children, be cut off. And I cut off in the scriptures, the Old Testament. Hell. And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. You know, when we read verses 1 through 5, that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And 6 all the way to 20 is the prayer of Jesus over Judas. This is God the Son praying for Judas. This is no mere man praying. I got to sneeze, excuse me. <clears throat> what kind of prayer do you think that Jesus has when you change his word? This is a man who has attacked Jesus the flesh, who is God, 
What about a man that changes Jesus to flesh, to spirit, who is God? And in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Blotted out of what? Is there going to be anybody in glory that will be the of the family of Judas? Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. That's a vast statement. This is Jesus praying over the one that betrayed him that said that Satan entered into him. This is the one that's going to come up and be part of Satan in tribulation, the Antichrist. Let them be before the Lord continually. The sins. That he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. You know what happens when a man goes to hell? Those sins are openly before God forever. That is why he is cast in hell. Listen, Jesus Christ didn't save you to go to get out of hell. Jesus Christ came and died and bled and suffered and was buried and rose again. That your sins may be cleansed, your sins may be washed. Because your sins are washed, because there are no sins in the eyes of God, that is why you get out of hell. Because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor. The Bible says he was he was the treasure, he was a thief, for he held the bag. But persecuted the poor and the needy man. Uh-oh. That he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing. So let it come unto him. What kind of character was Judas? That he loved cursing. And yet he went out with the twelve with the twelve. He did wonders and works with the twelve. And he died and went to hell. You can be a deacon of a church, you can be a pastor of the church and do the works of the Lord and still be lost and go to hell. Here's a man that walked three and a half years with Jesus. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. There's no blessings in hell. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with his garment. This guy was a cussing. And we're still on the subject of Judas. He was a curser. You think Peter was bad when he was at the fire? This guy wrapped himself in cursing. So let it come onto his own, let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Let it sink down deep inside the curse. not healthy it's not healthy to curse let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually let this be the reward of my adversaries from the Lord and of them that speak evil against my soul Well, I know one thing, as far as speaking about David, God takes it personally. He said to Paul, listen, you, you, why persecutest thou me? 
Don't you curse them because of how they treat you. Let them stand before God one day and let God say, why did you do that to me? I didn't do that to you. Oh, yes, you did. Now, one thing about Paul was Paul had a heart that repented and got right and done right. And look what he sold through his life. He ended up being stoned. He ended up in prison. He ended up being whipped. He ended up with pearls. But he's in heaven today. Will be to the one that, that does this to Christians <coughs> and dies and goes to hell. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs on those who did it to Christians. 21. Now we switch. But do thou for me, O God, the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thy mercy is good, and deliver thou me. You don't dare pray that today. You don't dare ask God to judge your, your enemies and turn around and say, God, treat me right with mercy. How can you say that th there's no dispensation? How can you say there's no difference? Where Jesus records and John records the love thy neighbor, love thy brother. John records in the, in the first epistle, if you don't love your brother, you don't love the Lord. And here is a man, David, look what he's been praying. Because, that, because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. So the Bible says about Jesus, yet he was rich, he became poor. He needed to rely on men. He was invited into people's house to get the meal. Paul says that in all his perils, there were perils that he didn't have food. There was perils he didn't have water. That's needy. And my heart is wounded within me. They say when they pierced his side and that water and blood came out, that shows a broken heart, the medical doctors will proclaim. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. That's a sundial. I am tossed up and down as a locust. Now, a locust are easily moved by the wind. The wind can blow locusts away. And you read about that in, in Exodus. The mighty east wind came up and cast them away, I believe, to the Red Sea. My knees are weak through fasting. All right, so he's fasting. And my flesh faileth of fatness. I become also reproached unto them. When they looked upon me, they shake their heads. That's Jesus. He was a reproach on his own brethren. And he fasted 40 days. He fasted often. When he, when he broke the, the, the bread and the fish, does it say he ate it? Help me, O Lord my God, O save me according to thy mercy, that they may know that this is thy hand. Father, into thy hands I commend my... How about it? Even Elijah, when he's on Mount Car Carmel, Carmel, on Mount Carmel, praying, he says, Lord, let them know it is you and not me doing this. So that fire came down and did what fire cannot do. Jesus died on that cross. Pilate marveled that he was dead already. They took him down off that cross early because it was the high day. It was the Sabbath. It was the Passover. He wasn't supposed to be dead. 
when they came to the two thieves, they saw, you know, they were alive. They break their feet so they wouldn't walk away. That thou, Lord, has done it. Let them curse, but bless thou. Okay, that's a switch. That's a church age. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father rejoicing at those who do trust him, those who do do right. Let my adversaries be clothed with shame. Those who do not do what God tells them to do. Shame. And let them be let them cover themselves with their own confusion. God is not the author of confusion. As with a mantle. Listen, a, a saved man to judgment seat of Christ, a lost man to great white throne judgment will be in shame. Just because you're, you're saved doesn't mean shame goes away. Imagine a guy who's been in the church and all that and doesn't confess his sins and everything he said about everybody in that church comes out to be said at the judgment seat of Christ. Imagine all the you know the people in that church now turns around and looks at him, uh-huh. Now I know the truth, you 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 hypocrite. Then the shame at the, at the great white throne judgment that they have not believed on God. Imagine the shame that an atheist is going to have. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude. I hope you do that as a Christian. I hope with the mouth salvation is confessed. I hope you're going all in the world to preach the gospel. For he shall stand at the right hand of the poor, Mark 12, 36, to save him from those that condemn his soul. So we close. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God.